I'm just firing up a cigarette here. Like and retweet this shit. This is going to be a fascinating show for you guys. Okay, so I want to treat this like a dissection. This is going to be somewhat of like a psychological autopsy, you could call it. And I want to go back into the early days because I think the trajectory and the arc is extremely fascinating and intriguing. Um, Because I do think Tate is a mercurial figure. I think he is a very clear, very clearly defined winner in a lot of aspects. And I think that the grassroots um, meteoric rise that he's had, um, I think he's tapped into the, the nature and the essence in many ways of being a man and what masculinity is. Um, however, I don't want any moral inclusion in what I'm about to share with you guys. In other words, this is my viewpoint the way I see things from day one, um, you know, using sort of a patchwork way of going about it and dissecting it from my life experience combined with dealing with sharks and dealing with these, these sorts of personalities, these sorts, these sort of uh, folk hero, um, you know, Nietzschean figures. Um, so I want to begin. Um, and again, I want to make it very clear. I have zero moral inclusion i'm not coming at this from a moral standpoint this is just how i see how things went down so let's zoom back how i believe the whole thing started with tate's campaign and him coming onto the scene when he had much a much less devout following is i believe pops passes away i believe he did inherit some kind of money, whether that was life insurance. I believe him and his brother absolutely inherited a, a, a batch of cash, whether that was a million dollars, 500K, don't know what the fuck the number is, but I absolutely believe that there was some seed money that came posthumously of, from the passing of his father. Then what I believe took place is I believe that that base model Lamborghini was purchased jointly I believe they pulled their funds together, got that first Lambo, that Huracan that we, that we saw for years. And I believe that was the pinnacle. That was the beginning of the apotheosis of this. I want to call it almost like a guerrilla marketing campaign. Okay. Get that Lambo. Now you hit the ground running. Now you can utilize that asset to essentially bootstrap what I would call a sort of McMahonian marketing campaign. And when I say McMahonian, what I mean is Vince McMahon, arguably one of the greatest geniuses of our time, started the World Wrestling Federation. Now, the types of surly characters that you saw, the ego, maniacal, unbelievably outrageous, puffed up characters that come out of the World Wrestling Federation, guys like The Rock, that type of bravado, I believe Tate borrowed those fundamentals, okay? I call it McMahonian marketing. The fundamentals of carefully curating an outrageous persona that is so over the top and so brazen and so unbelievable and so striking that even if you're of a a higher intelligence, it's so overtly egregious that even you as an intelligent human being somewhat can buy in because it's just so in your face and aggressive. So I think that marketing campaign sets off. I think that we are seeing the product of a very broken home. Um, I can relate. I think Tate comes from a very um, checkered sort of history. I believe there was probably a lot of trauma in childhood within the, within the home. And we all know that goes one of two ways. Either there, either there creates a super predator, which 
Tate obviously has become a super predator using whatever pain and whatever struggle he's been in through his life. He has maximized it to the fullest. And I do not want to understate or take away anything from the guy because, like I said, I do see him as a clear winner. Now, Tate is most fascinating to me because he is in direct objection to Eastern mysticism and the Eastern teachings of passivity, removing desire, removing ego. The guy absolutely has utilized the full capacity of the human ego to catapult himself to the heights that he's come from, that he's, that he initially came from. In other words, he, Tate is proof that you, your past is somewhat irrelevant and that we are all born as men from the primordial ooze. We all have the potential to use the ego and the faculties and the pain and the trauma that we've had to build ourselves into some sort of behemoth, into some sort of monstrosity, right? So I believe Tate's strategy, his, his mode of artistic expression has been, he went all in on this outrageous persona, okay? Now, there was a tweet, I believe it was last week, that was fascinating to me. It, it, somebody quote tweeted Tate when he was calling people broke, poor, miserable, whatever. He said something to the effect of in the tweet that he couldn't imagine living your life. And the person that quote tweeted him very astutely and accurately said, this is what Tate sees when he looks in the mirror. Now, you have to understand, I fully believe that Tate and a lot of men who have gone through a lot of fucking turmoil in their childhood, I believe that they remain permanently tiny inside. Tiny, tiny humans internally. And Tate's response to that is the correct response, which is the Nietzschean theme, which is truth to power. What I believe the entire underpinnings of the heroic rise of his whole movement is essentially Tate lied his way into the truth. Okay? The claims, the, the money claims, the figures he was throwing around were lies in the beginning. Okay. I believe 100% that they were lies. He made, he turned the lies that he spoke into the universe into the fucking truth. He made them real. He made them real. He lied his way into the truth, which is undeniably an incredible fucking feat. And I believe that he got blood drunk off of it. He saw that he could continually, you know how everybody on Twitter always talks about, oh, don't share your goals out loud because you get that dopamine hit and it's going to fuck you on the back end. Keep your goals private. Tate flies right in the face of all that bullshit. Tate literally did the exact fucking opposite and has been sharing his ambitions, his goals, his numbers for fucking years. And he's made every one of them happen. He's made every one of them happen. I think the numbers he was telling you he was worth were severely bloated and embellished in the beginning. I don't think he had much money. But the conviction in the WWE-like persona and the aggressive ramming it down your throat, it just shows you the power of repetition. You know what I mean? Like even the kickboxing credentials. You can literally run a fucking Google search, a run-of-the-mill vanilla Google search, and you can fucking check into all of the claims. And a lot of them are severely embellished, but nobody gives a fuck. Because the guy will just sit in front of the camera and talk shit to you and essentially break you down and just repetitively tell you things are true that aren't true. Right? Which is what the media does, which is what the government does, which is what all institutions that are pulling ruses, it's what they do. It's exactly what they do. And so 
I don't even want to call it nefarious because I don't think the intent is nefarious. I think we're dealing with a man who got a stranglehold over his demons and was spewing nonsense into the ether. And then I believe through action was making the shit come true. So who the fuck would not get drunk off of that, right? Because let's look at it this way. Every goal that you have as a man, fundamentally, every ambition that you have begins as a lie. When I said I was going to snatch 300 pounds, that was a lie when it first started. And then you make it real. You make your goals come true. You make your ambitions real. That's what it means to be a man, right? Extruding the imagination, extruding that into the real world and crystallizing it. That is the essence of being a man. That's what it's all about. So you could technically, if you want to get into semantics, you could say that every goal that a man has is a fucking lie. And then the masculine imperative, and this is how you reverberate through history. This is how you change the future. This is why men are the bringers of the future. This is why the men are the harbingers. Because we take the fantasies in our mind and we etch them in stone in the real world for eternity. And that's what Tate's been able to do, which is undeniably impressive. It's undeniable. Now, the other thing that you guys have to understand is that I don't give a fuck how tough you are. I don't give a fuck how badass you are. We all, as men, we all bleed red. We all fucking bleed red. And Tate, one of the most intriguing aspects of the, 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 the persona that he's crafted is that he has led a lot of you to believe that he's an extraterrestrial. Okay? There's, a, there's, a, there's an element of extraterrestrialism here where he has convinced a lot of you that he does not bleed red, that, he does, that he's not fallible, that he doesn't have the same human interface or the same human experience that you have, which if you're an intelligent man, you know is a crock of shit, right? We all feel fear. We all feel these things. He's done an incredible job, an incredible job. And this is why I talk about masculinity. This man has emotionally dominated himself day in and day out. The, I, I don't think you guys understand the level that some people are willing to go to to win. And this man is, is, is the fucking poster boy for this shit. Like the, the length that that guy is willing to go to to win would fucking make you do a backflip out of your chair. And I'm talking like all the little optics that you guys would think are real. Okay, this is just my opinion. Do you guys understand how easy it is to post a fucking dinner receipt for $30,000 in wine, $30,000 in food? Do you understand how easy anybody could do that, right? If, if I'm a, a regular at a restaurant, all I have to do is go up to the owner and have him print a fucking fake receipt that I could take a screenshot of and I could upload it to Twitter and you would think that I had a $30,000 dinner. They could just fucking r literally ring up a receipt. Now, the naive and the innocent will think I'm crazy for saying that somebody would go to those lengths to, to cultivate an image, but you're dead wrong. You're dead wrong. There are many men who, in order to maintain that identity, would go to those lengths. Now, that's not an indictment on Tate, but a lot of the things that have been posted on there could easily, very, very easily, with a tiny little bit of influence and power and gusto, could be, could be, there could be those underhanded gambits going on behind the scenes. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, before this movement popped off, because the, the proportion of wealth and the numbers that were changing on the claims, for one, one day he was worth 10 million, then he was worth 60, then he was worth 150, then it was 50 again, then it was 80. The numbers were just, were in, and it was just proof that the guy was getting so high off of his own Kool-Aid because he was so brazen and everybody was just going to fucking, everybody was going to feed it the trough off of anything that he was saying anyway. He didn't even have to keep the same fucking story. The guy could literally change his fucking story every fucking time and nobody would bat an eye, right? Because it's that WWE 
I'm the greatest, I'm the world champion, just constant bombardment of self-reinforcement, which is incredibly powerful because very few people, very few people are capable of emotionally dominating themselves to that capacity. And here's the other key. You have to, like, Tate believed his, his own bullshit. He believed it. That's the whole, like, that's the whole, that's the last piece of the puzzle here. The guy wasn't just arbitrarily lying. He believed what he was saying is true because he believed down the road it would be true. There's a very clear distinction there. Very clear distinction there. And then, I mean, the car thing. None of those cars, if you know anything about cars, none of those cars have real European plates. You know what I mean? Like I, I've, I've kicked around theories with some people that I'm close to who are very fucking sharp. Who the fuck knows where those, all those cars came from? That, that those cars could easily be a uh, fucking chic that he's fucking borrowing, that he could be storing those cars on a lot, using his house as a lot to store all those cars. Like people would say, Oh, he's got $300 million in cars. Well, his, he's got $3 million in cars, but his house is worth 600 grand in Romania. That house is literally worth 600 K. So the cars were always a lot higher net worth than the house he was living in, which, I mean, if you're making big money claims is a massive red flag. If you have your wits about you and you're intelligent, like that's the first thing you'd put together. You'd be like, how does, why is someone's fleet of cars more expensive than the house they're living in? Doesn't make much sense. Now I want to talk about the identity maintenance. Okay. Because This is a man who, when I talk about that persona that he crafted, right? That masculine armor, that mask. And this is why I disagree with the fucking Eastern teachings as well, is because they, those teachings are about disarming you as a man. Fuck that. I think Tate has the appropriate response, right? Tate is somewhat of a cultural critic to a lot of these schools of thought. His whole shtick is about wearing that fucking masculine armor and wearing the mask until the bitter end. He ain't, he ain't taking off the armor. He ain't taking off the mask. He's playing a character, and he's going to double down on that character until he's dead. Until he's fucking dead. That's, that's just the bottom line. He's willing to die to protect that avatar that he created, which I don't give a fuck if you go to any sector. If you look at any winner, that's what they're doing. Any winner has an armor and a mask if you're a man. It's that simple. It's just that fucking simple. And these Eastern teachings of meditation, don't have desire, kill the ego. It's designed to disarm you. You are disarmed. You are neutered. You are castrated. Tate refused those teachings. He's in direct opposition of it. And he's shown you the power of the human spirit and the human ego. Do you understand the energy expenditure, the sheer volume of energy required to maintain the character that Tate was playing? I don't think the common person can even comprehend the amount of obsession and pathology it takes to uphold that 24 motherfucking seven. That dude is bolstering the ego and bolstering that persona because it's just been so goddamn effective. Now there's consequences to this, obviously. Okay. This comes, this style comes with a tremendous amount of emotional pain that you have to ignore. It takes an incredible Herculean level of repression stuffing down the emotions and repressing the way you really feel and just absolutely, like I said before, emotionally dominating yourself that you're a winner. This guy's self-talk has to be so violent internally, so fucking violent. I mean, the guy has pretty much waged intellectual violence against himself, intellectual violence against himself in order to get himself and whip himself up into this frenzy where he's always turned on, always in that manic phase in front of the camera, flashy, flamboyant, puffed up. 
It's a 24 hour endeavor. And it's him. It's him. It's indistinguishable. That's the most incredible part about the whole fucking saga is that it's indistinguishable. It gets to a point where he's shoveling so much coal into the furnace to be this person that he's not, that he actually is now that person. They're inseparable. He's killed off the old Tate. He's killed off the boy, the hurt boy, whatever the fuck you want to call it, whatever archetype. He's actually murdered. He's murdered the old self. And there's been a crystallization of this new superego, which is fucking fascinating to, to witness because I've, I've been watching it for years. I've been watching the guy just dominate himself and will himself um, into this, into the spectacle, right? Into this wonder. And that, and that's what he's become. Now the jail thing is interesting because Tate is obviously going to go down as a folk hero. Okay. And right now he's somewhat of a martyr. When I tell you that Tate is a clear winner, winners are always going to take any kind of misfortune and they're always going to spin wheat into gold right? Like rumple fucking stilt skin. So Tate is going to take this whole jail thing. And I'm telling you what's going through his head right now is he views it as an investment. He views it as an investment. So he's going to sit and he's going to, he's going to be in jail. I don't know when the fuck he's going to get out, but he's going to be in jail. And what it's going to do is it's going to crystallize that masculine essence that I'm telling you guys about that he has, because he's going to come out and he's going to monetize the living fuck out of the jail experience. He's going to monetize the fuck out of it. The stories are going to be inc- insane, right? He's probably going to tell you stories of them starving him, you know, beating him, whatever. Like he's going to he's going to glamorize the conditions. And he's going to make he's going to he's going to basically frame it as look, I'm a hero of the people. I went to jail for you guys to spread the truth. That's how it's going to be framed. So he's fine right now. I bet you he's in a very decent frame of mind because he's going to turn this whole thing and flip it on its head and turn it into a fucking win because that's what winners do. That's what winners do. The guy is clearly a natural born winner. It's just that simple. I mean, like the guy just can't do anything wrong. He really can't make mistakes because on the back end, he's going to figure out a way to fucking monetize the fuck out of it. And make himself be a bigger hero. He's the hero now who suffered in jail. The big bad wolf who suffered in jail. And when he comes out of it, the stories, the glamour, just you wait. Just you wait. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. It's all going to be fucking monetized. He's going to get even bigger than he is now. And it's going to be one of the greatest shows on earth. So, look, I've always said on my Twitter the winning mentality is very unhealthy. You're going to have to pick poison if you want to be a winner in life. That's just a fact. The emotional domination, the intellectual violence that men at the highest echelons have to inflict upon themselves in order to, I want to say, disobey the natural laws of like what they were supposed to be on paper is incommensurable with what you guys would ordinarily think like it takes to get to that level. It takes 24 hours a day of identity maintenance. Whoever the fuck you think you are, that super ego is going to save your fucking life. The super ego, the, the ego is literally all you have as a man. If you do not have an ego as a man, you are indistinguishable from a woman. It's just that simple. And Here's, here's kind of what I really want to end this with so you guys can kind of understand that there's a major trade-off here, okay? As a man, I believe the masculine imperative is about being effective, okay? I think happiness, I will trade happiness to be effective all goddamn day. Every day of the week, I would rather be miserable and effective than happy and ineffective. Give me effective because at least I'm demonstrating 
competent as a man, right? Making money, fucking hot women. Those are two very simple reductionist ways to demonstrate competence as a male. If you can make millions of dollars and you can have sex with hot women, to some degree, you've shown male competence. And a lot of men are miserable doing those things, right? Like, just because you make millions of dollars and you're on yachts and you're banging a bunch of bitches, I'm not going to sit here and tell you for one minute that that's going to make you satisfied or somehow you're going to feel like you made it. A lot of that comes with a lot of misery deep down. But it also comes with a level of effectiveness and power that's indescribable and worth the trade-off for a lot of men. And I believe that's the, the trade-off for Tate. I, I believe Tate probably has a very dreary internal monologue. It's very dreary and it's probably very bleak. And there's probably a lot of, a lot of unhappiness and misery underneath the veneer, but he's effective. He's a weapon. He has forged himself into a blunt instrument designed to win and get what he wants. Separated, partitioned from how he feels about it. Doesn't give a fuck how he feels. He just wants to win. He just wants to win. And losers are far more concerned with how they feel. They're far more concerned with the state of being and the psychological damage that's being extolled on them. So there, there is a poison here. There is a dose of poison that you have to pick. Now, in Tate's case, in Tate's case, the psychological poison that he has taken a little spoonful a day, it's not going to kill you. It'll just make you sick. It's not going to kill you. It'll just make you sick. And my point is, is that there is some spiritual decay. There's some spiritual necrosis in crafting and maintaining that persona that I'm talking about. Obviously, it's damaging to the soul. Obviously, it's damaging to the psyche. Obviously. But you, but you don't see that. Nobody sees that. That's a private dealing. That's a private dealing between him and his God. And you'll never see it because that's what it takes to be a fucking winner. You have to disregard the corporeal body on some level. On some level, any champion has a very twisted, perverted, um, distorted view of their own nature. And you have to make a sacrifice. It's not healthy to want to be extremely successful. It's not healthy. I mean, we're fucking primates. We're designed to roam around in bushes, do a little fucking, make a little art, be a little inventive, create some things, and move on, right? That's homeostasis. But to break the bounds of what normal people are doing, is gonna, you're going to have to t absorb some severe emotional damage. Now, how well you curate that and how well you deal with that pain dictates how far you're going to go. There's a lot of men who don't make it. They, they get broken on that journey. They just weren't built for it. Sorry, nature is cruel. And this is why I believe the Tate spectacle and phenomenon is so ubiquitously um, sort of embraced right now. Is because people are tapping into the fact, even subconsciously, that this is a man who has completely shattered the fourth wall. I mean, he's completely annihilated um, just any sort of a, the mainstream idea of like how to get to success. He's taken a completely barbaric, off-the-road, hack-and-slash, rough-and-tumble type of approach of just 100% self-bombarded self-talk. I mean, that's it. That's the fucking Nietzschean fucking principle. That's it. Truth to power. Truth to power. So I'm going to end this here. Um, if you guys want to continue this discussion, pop in my DMs. But I've just found the entire thing extremely illuminating today um, with the whole thing about people talking about the jail thing. I'm telling you guys that winners will absolutely flip any misfortune on its head. And he's going to use this whole fucking thing to come back viciously stronger than he ever was before, because that's what fucking winners do.